Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. We're back out in the garage. It's a nice hot day. We're going to go ahead and install the Rugged Ridge Amphib High Low Snorkel. If you know anything about the Florida trails, they can be super dusty or super wet. There seems to be no gray area, so the snorkel for us just makes sense. This is going to let us reach up and get that nice cool dry air to suck into the engine, which should help us run a little better. Now, when we install a snorkel, we have to keep in mind that the stock fording height is still 30 inches. That's going to play into our electronics and, and our breather tubes for axles and transmissions. So we're not going to be able to go much above that, but we can still have some confidence that we're not going to suck water and that really thick dust into our engine. It's hot. Let's quit talking about it. Let's go ahead and get to the install. So the nice part about the snorkel is it's the least invasive model that we could possibly get for the Jeep Gladiator. Uh, all the other ones require you to cut the hood or something like that, but this allows us to just remove a body panel, install the snorkel, it's completely reversible, back to stock and you never even know it's there. So the tools we're gonna need for this is a T30 and a T40 Torx bit, a 10 millimeter socket, a body trim removal tool, and a 5 8 inch drill bit. All right, so step one is to go ahead and remove the grill. It's held on by six of these plastic push tabs, and that's why we needed our body trim removal tool, so we can go ahead and grab those without breaking them, so we can go ahead and reinstall our grill when we're done. The reason we have to re remove our grill is so we can get access to that ram air tube that sits down in the down in the grill itself and pushes air up into our air box. If we leave that in there, the chance of pushing water up into the air box is increased. So Rugged Ridge wants to go ahead and take that out. So like I said, there are six of them. We're gonna use a uh, pry tool and our trim removal tool so we don't uh, damage any of these surfaces. You can use a flathead screwdriver if you want, but the idea is just to get under here, get your tool under, That, it just pops up a little bit. You can go ahead and pop that out. That's gonna take the tension off the tab itself and then these pop right out. Go ahead and save them, don't lose them. So now that the six push tabs are removed, we wanna go ahead and protect our grill from our front bumper. We have this hoop here with some sharp edges. I don't wanna damage the paint, so it's just a gentle push towards you, pull towards you. It should come right off and then there's some snaps down at the bottom holding it in that should give you access to it. But you're gonna have to work around your winch uh, and your bumper if you have it to, to, to finagle this out. If you're running the stock bumper, this will come right closer to you and come right out. All right, we're moving right along. We got the grill off. Now we have to move the radiator support bar out of the way so we can go ahead and get to the two screws that hold in the ambient air ram air ducts that feeds air up into the air box itself and it's factory configuration. We gotta get that out of there. Rugged Ridge doesn't want us to have it. So you're gonna need a T30 to move the bar out. We're gonna loosen the top one and we'll take the bottom one out and that way we can just pivot this over, do what we need to do, put it back, tighten it up. Now, like I said, T30 up here, T30 down at the bottom as well. We're gonna go ahead and loosen this one. Just so we have some play in it. I'm not taking it all the way out and then we'll go ahead and pop this one all the way out. So we have two T20s uh, holding on our ram air duct. We're gonna go ahead and pop these out and then we'll get to that when we go ahead and take the air box out. We're gonna drop these. All right, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our radiator support bracket. All right, so now we're gonna have to disconnect this tube from the air intake itself and it's super easy, don't be intimidated. There's a little gray tab up here. You're just gonna go ahead and push that down and then wiggle this tube off just like that and I'll set it aside. Be careful not to manipulate this too much. You don't want to snap it, you don't want to break it. It is plastic uh, and it is important. So we have that disconnected. We're good to go to keep moving on. So we're gonna use our obnoxiously large overkill flathead screwdriver to loosen the hose clamps on the air intake. And then we're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove the bolt holding the air box down into the Jeep itself. We'll get that pulled out of here. All right, take the 10 millimeter bolt holding the air box down in. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and remove the air intake itself. Remember, there are two rubber plugs down at the bottom on the frame side, so it could take a little bit of force to get out, but it'll come right out. There's nothing else holding this in. Trick of the trade, little pro tip here. There's these little rubber grommets that fit on these feet. This is what gets inserted into your frame side to keep your air box secure after you take the bolt out. Go ahead and pop these off if they came out with the air box. 
put them back in their respective holes down the frame side, it's gonna make installation of this way easier. So if you remember when we took the grill off and moved the radiator support, we took two screws out. We took them out of this. This is our ambient air duct. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove that. All right, so we're gonna put it to the side. We're not gonna get rid of it. If we ever wanna convert back to stock, get rid of the snorkel itself, we're gonna wanna reinstall this. You don't need it for the snorkel installation, but you do need it for stock configuration. So retain it if you want, it's your decision, but we're gonna retain ours. It's almost like Jeep knew we were gonna be messing with our Jeeps, right? They gave us this fancy little toolkit. You can find it in the glove box. Hopefully your dealer gave it to you. If they didn't, there's standard size here, but we're gonna go ahead and remove our radio antenna panel. I don't know why they call it that. The antenna's down below. You don't need to remove your antenna. That you can retain. It can run with the snorkel. It's just gonna fit just fine. We'll need our long skinny one, our fancy ratchet. We're gonna go ahead and pop this panel off. So you're gonna find this little fender foam piece in here. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. Try not to hack it up too much, but it's just a gentle tug. Stick right on there. You don't need to retain it for this installation, but like I said, if you ever wanna go back to stock, hold on to all your stock pieces. That way you can do that. Right, so you're gonna find one 10 millimeter bolt over here on this uh, plastic cowl plenum. Go ahead and remove that. You don't need to retain it. It's not gonna be reused for this. So I kinda of lied to you twice. I told you the tools and I left out the razor blade or some sort of cutting instrument. And the other thing I told you is that we wouldn't need to cut at all. We're gonna need to cut. We're gonna cut this plastic piece and you're gonna follow the, the line down, the body line down, and then you see another horizontal line. You're just gonna follow that and you're gonna cut off this little itty bitty bit. Take our body panel or our snorkel inlet now and go ahead and attach it to where we took that other body panel off. We're going to install this using the factory hardware and everything should line up really, really nice. We're gonna really do a good job of making sure that this is gonna, gonna work for us. So we have two different size bolts. The longer bolts are the ones that are gonna go on top, in the top uh, panel, and then the shorter ones are the ones that are gonna go on the side panel. Keep in mind these panels are plastic. You don't want to over tighten them or you're going to risk cracking them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pop the factory inlet off of the air box. We're going to remove this one bolt and then there's a bunch of tabs that we're going to have to go through and pop out uh, to get this off. So you're gonna see some people struggle with this if you watch any other YouTube installation videos. Take your time, push through it. Don't try to break anything and break these off and just rip them off using brute force. It will come off, just go slow, take your time. Right, so Rugged Ridge wants us to install this drain petcock that we're gonna install at the bottom of the air box here. And you're gonna index your 5 8 inch drill hole between this rubber uh, rectangular pad and then this uh, factory sticker here. So it's gonna be right in this area. Here, we're gonna bias it towards this rubber pad a little bit just to give us a clean bite, but it's gonna go right in there and allow us to drain the water out of our air box in case we ever do suck in some water, it won't go down the engine itself. So we're gonna go ahead and seal up this air box now. There's some factory holes in there that allow some ventilation, some water drainage, stuff like that. Uh, Rugged Ridge provides for us all the push pins to, to seal up the factory holes. We're also going to put some sealant around them and we're going to put some sealant around our petcock and go ahead and install that thing and get that thing squared away right now. So we have our, the beginning parts of our petcock installed and that's sealed off with some uh, gasket maker. And then we have the plastic uh, push tabs that Rugged Ridge gave us to plug up all the factory uh, small holes that they've drilled into the box itself. So again, we're gonna put some more uh, gasket maker, some sealant on this, and plug these up. All 
right, we're gonna go ahead and assemble the rest of our drain petcock and that will complete what we have to do with the air box with the exception of putting the snorkel inlet on the front. But go ahead and we need our hose clamp, push it on and drive it all the way down. And we'll tighten that up here in a minute or two. But then we have our actual drain valve itself and you can orient this in any direction. Don't forget your other hose clamp. And then go ahead and push your petcock on, tighten up your hose clamps, orient this in the direction that makes the most sense to be able to get it from underneath your Jeep to close it up. You're gonna to wanna to run this uh, on your daily driver open until you hit the trails and you're gonna to wanna to close it, otherwise it'll suck up water. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble our air box to put the filter back in and um, it'd be a good point at this one to change out your filter, but ours is family near, so we'll be okay. Put the lid back on, tighten the lid down, and then we're going to go ahead and install the, the inlet adapter for the snorkel itself on the front of the air box. So we're gonna go ahead and put our, our gasket over our snorkel intake adapter. Uh, you really can't mess this up. It's shaped specifically for this. Uh, you just go ahead and push it on there, push it past the tabs. I don't know if you can see those. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and uh, mate your intake to your air box. That should just be a good firm push. Make sure the gasket is seated properly all the way around. You have good proper engagement. And there you go. Your air box is reassembled, ready to be put back in the Jeep. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the air filter housing back into the Jeep itself and make sure they're oriented correctly with the adapter and make sure that we get this oriented back into the Jeep properly so we can go ahead and start buttoning things up. If everybody's tracking, I'm on my third shirt now. I'll link my wife's laundry detergent down below if you guys wanna try it out, but it's 100 degrees out and I'm sweating, so let's get on with it. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and reassemble all of our air intake stuff. We're gonna put the 10 millimeter bolt back in the adapter. We're gonna tighten up our hose clamps and anything else that we loosen up to try to make this a little bit easier on ourselves. I loosened up all the hose clamps and the rubber in intake hose all the way back to the throttle body. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble all that stuff, but keep your intake itself loose because you wanna be able to move it back and forth so you get those uh, remaining of the hoses installed correctly. All right, so now we have to install our silicone couplers onto our air intake tube that's gonna connect the snorkel side to the air box itself. Uh, Rugged Ridge recommends using soapy water on the inside of this. Don't go crazy, just enough to kind of lubricate it and help you get it on a little better. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Short side goes on short side, long side goes on long side. <laughs> All right, silicone couplers are installed. This longer one's gonna take some take some oomph, unless you can lubricate it better than I can, but uh, she's on. Right, so we have these five inch clamps, we have four of them. I already installed these on this side, so two more on the other side. This is gonna how you're gonna join it uh, to the air box, to the snorkel, nice and securely. All right, we're on shirt number five, it's still 100 degrees out, and I find it important to note that the small black tab on the uh, inlet bridge here, we'll call it, points down when installed on the vehicle. So you want that facing down to the ground. Uh, the short side is what's gonna connect your air box, and the long side is what's gonna connect to your snorkel side. So if you have that oriented properly, you have your hose clamps on, we can go ahead and lubricate these again with some soapy water and start fitting them into the vehicle itself. And center it so you have sufficient coverage over both uh, pieces of plastic so you'll be able to bite on the clamp there and you have no leaks no issues all the rubber gaskets are evenly seated across the plastic and go ahead and tighten up your clamps you don't want to go too tight with your clamps because then you'll warp the plastic under the heat so just tight enough to keep the gasket and everything in place and to keep the hose in place and prevent any leakage so we're at the point now where everything is buttoned up. So make sure you go through and you tighten up all your 10 millimeter air intake bolts. You tighten up your air box bolt. All your hose clamps are tightened up. Everything's buttoned up the way it should. Your air box, your filter's installed. Your hose is re-cooked onto the air intake. Now we go ahead and throw our uh, grill on. As long as we made sure that we attached our radiator support again, you don't want to forget that step. Once that's reattached, go ahead and try to finagle your grill back onto the front of your Jeep. Don't forget to reinstall all six of your plastic push pins back into the grill to keep that support there and keep it nice and strong. Good to go. All right, coming up on our home stretch here, we're going out to move to the snorkel side on the outside of the vehicle. We have this rubber gasket 
And then if we're using the high mount like we are, we have the side that attaches the high mount to the vehicle itself. So we have to attach this rubber gasket with the adhesive backing to the high mount uh, mount itself. Take your time with this gasket stuff. This is what's going to keep the water and the dust out of your intake. Line up the holes. And go around and firmly adhere it to the plastic itself. And then we have our rubber molded gasket that goes on the other side of our blank off plate. And you can see by the shape that it only fits one way. So go ahead and insert that into there. And now let's go over to the, the side of the vehicle. All right, then we're just gonna line up our holes. Let's so make sure that this is seated on there really nicely. There's no gaps in the rubber gasket so all the dust and all the water stay out. All right, once that's seated on there, we have this top gasket that we gotta fit over these pegs. And that's gonna create a gasket between the snorkel itself and the intake. And so make sure that when you're applying this top gasket that goes in between the intake and uh, your snorkel itself, this larger, fatter lip goes towards the rear of the Jeep or towards the windshield itself. And then your thinner one will go towards the front. This thing can be a little funky to try to figure out um, which way it needs to be oriented. And that is, that's the correct orientation for this. And on the back of the snorkel, you'll find a, a screw hole with an indent. That's where the rubber plug goes. This is gonna create support between the windshield and the snorkel itself so it doesn't bounce around on it. So go ahead and screw that in and you can adjust it as needed once you have this all the way installed. Right, now, once you have that all set up, you can go ahead and slide your snorkel body on top there and then you have two sets of screws. You have some shorter screws and some longer screws. You want the longer screws if you're running the snorkel high mount itself. All right, once it's all set up, go ahead and drive your screws in. Remember, this is plastic. Don't wanna to go too, too hard. The final step, we're gonna go ahead and put our, the head on top of our snorkel. Rugged Ridge offers two different heads. You have the ram air head, you have the pre-filter head. The pre-filter head creates a vortex, getting all the sand and dust, spinning in there, kind of spits it out the bottom, sucks the clean air in. This will also get you up above the dust and, and it won't create a vortex in there for you, but it also gets you a little higher, so you should be good there. Uh, you don't have to worry about water coming out. It's got some siphoning stuff in here. And then you also have the petcock down in the air box. So there's stuff designed in here to make it so you can run this facing into the rain and not have to worry about it. I know on uh, Instagram and YouTube, you see a lot of people turning their snorkel heads around. You don't need to do that. It's designed in a way to be able to run through the rain and not suck water into your engine. And like I said, there's things within this that is uh, designed to siphon that water away from your engine. So make sure you have your black hose clamp and your snorkel head on there. I'm just gonna slide it on there, figure out what side is straight, and then tighten this up and you should be good to go. All right, so that's the installation. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Like I said, the most non-invasive way to install a snorkel on your Jeep Gladiator or Jeep Wrangler JL. Uh, this is the Rugged Ridge Amphib. You can run it in two different configurations, the high mount like we have with the ram air head, or you can just run it with the bottom low mount configuration, which still gives you an incredible amount of fording. Like if you're up to the water to here, things are getting real weird for you. If it's coming in through the windows, uh, you've done enough, right? So we have plenty of height here to get us up out of the dust if we're following somebody, like in our, our Osceola video, you can see just how dusty it was that day. Uh, and it also gets us out of the water for the splashing and, and the water fording stuff. Uh, let's talk about what a snorkel isn't. A snorkel isn't a way to make a submarine out of a Jeep. You're still gonna have to be cognizant of your electronics and your breather tubes on your axles and your transmissions. Those can still suck in water and do an incredible amount of damage. This is just an insurance policy and extra precaution. Something to note, we're running the last fit auxiliary switch panel bank and it fits perfectly underneath all the tubing for the snorkel itself. Some of them like Oxbeam and some of the other companies, they go on top of the battery and it won't allow you to run a snorkel in this configuration with the Oxbeam control box on top of that. It's just gonna get in the way. We're not affiliated with Rugged Ridge in any way. We bought this with our own money and any opinions we have are ours and ours alone. This isn't a step-by-step -step installation how-to video. So please use the instructions to come with Rugged Ridge. Uh, so something I see online all the time that I wanted to hit on real quick is people ask, how do you access the petcock to drain the fluid out of the air box after it's installed? It looks like you wouldn't be able to do it if you get your hand in there. If you go in through the passenger side wheel well and you turn your wheels all the way to lock the driver's side, you can get in there uh, and you can see the petcock sticking out right by the shock tube and the spring mount. Uh, and you can just access it really easily. Nothing too crazy. It is fully accessible. So that's it. We look forward to getting this thing out on the trail, seeing just how well it performs. And But at first initial impressions, it seems like it's good quality and we're pretty excited because this is gonna let us get more remote and into those deeper, deeper campsites that we weren't able to get to before. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get all of our videos every week, and we can't wait to see you on the trail.